Now that the calendar is inching toward November, it's officially mock draft season. But if you're a real mock draft fan and a reader of thedraftnetwork.com, you know that it's always mock draft season. I'm Brian Perez, and it's time to mock the mock draft. First up is TDN scout Keith Sanchez's mock draft, which is the most recent mock that's been published on TDN. You can check it out under the mock draft tab on the website. And we have to start with the quarterbacks, right? Every NFL draft starts and ends with the quarterback. The draft season is more fun. The mock drafts are more fun. The top of the draft is more fun and exciting when you have quarterbacks that can challenge for the top pick or even a top five pick. And in Sanchez's mock, I think he hits it on the head by having no quarterbacks in the first five picks. Instead, the first quarterback comes off the board at number six overall to the Atlanta Falcons, and it's a shocking one. It's Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati, which I guess in this year's draft class, you really can't say who is the first quarterback that should come off the board. I'm leaning toward Malik Willis. I think a lot of draft analysts are starting to lean in that direction. The most recent TDN 100, which was updated in October, has Malik Willis ranked as the first quarterback in that top 100. He comes in at number 19. But in Sanchez's mock, it's Ritter at number six. And with all due respect to Sanchez, I'm gonna have to disagree with this pick. Last year in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons had an opportunity to draft a quarterback at number four overall. They decided instead to go with all-world tight end Kyle Pitts, but Justin Fields was sitting there. And if the Atlanta Falcons didn't grade Justin Fields high enough to justify using the number four pick on him, I can't imagine a prospect like Ritter will be so much higher on their draft board or even close to what Justin Fields would have or should have been in their scouting room to grab him with the sixth pick. That one feels like a reach to me. Yes, Matt Ryan's getting older. Yes, they need a succession plan in place, but is Ritter really the guy to take there? They probably could wait. If they wanna take a quarterback, trade back later in the first round, end up grabbing one of these later quarterbacks that we'll talk about in a minute that Sanchez has coming off the board in the second the half, in midway or second half of the first round. Ritter at six, I'm not a huge fan of it. The other two quarterbacks that come off the board in Sanchez's mock are Malik Willis, Liberty's quarterback, who the former Auburn transfer, who's dual threat, do it all guy, pushes the ball downfield, can beat you with his arm, can beat you with his legs. And he goes number 11 overall to the Washington football team. I love this pick, I love this fit. Uh, Willis in that offense with Terry McLaurin, Antonio Gibson, he would give the Washington football team something they've been missing for a very long time. The Dwayne Haskins experiment was obviously a massive failure. Ryan Fitzpatrick comes in, age is probably catching up with him with the injuries. Now they're just struggling to keep their head above water and it doesn't seem like they'll be able to do it for much longer. So a guy like Malik Willis who fits the modern offenses, the modern NFL offense with just his, his plus athleticism, his plus, his plus arm strength, he's a tough guy. He would look really good in the burgundy and gold, assuming those are the colors they keep moving forward uh, in Washington. The other quarterback that Sanchez has coming off the board at number 24 overall to the Cleveland Browns, which really surprised me here. Sam Howell from UNC. Number one, let's talk about the Browns drafting a quarterback in the first round in this mock. Yes, there's a chance the Browns move on from Baker Mayfield. Yes, you could argue that Baker Mayfield has been a little bit of a disappointment uh, since joining the team as the number one pick overall in 2018. But Sam Howell feels like a carbon copy of Baker Mayfield. So why would you replace a guy that maybe you're a little underwhelmed with or not satisfied with, with a guy who literally projects to be almost the same profile as a pro quarterback? Is it because of a contract? You're gonna pay him a lot less as a late first round pick versus Baker Mayfield on a second contract? I get that, but you know the devil you know versus the devil you, know, you don't know. And Baker Mayfield has done something in Cleveland that goes beyond the box score, that goes beyond the stats. He's beginning to change the culture there, even if it's not all because of him. Maybe the team around him has just gotten better, but he's a personality. He doesn't necessarily lose games for them, and they could do a lot worse than Baker Mayfield at quarterback. So in my opinion, the Browns won't be in the first round quarterback market. And even if they are in the first round quarterback market, it's not gonna be for a guy like Sam Howell, who is basically the exact same player that Baker Mayfield is. So. I gotta ding Sanchez on this one. I don't see that being a fit. I don't see Sam Howell even as a first round quarterback. I think he's gonna be a guy that we're waiting for deep into second round, maybe even the third round before Howell gets his name called. I think he started the season with a little too much hype and he hasn't lived up to it. His tape is gonna be solid. 
He's probably gonna check out okay in interviews, but he's just missing that extra little something that first round quarterbacks tend to bring to the table. So I don't think Sam Howell's a first rounder, and I certainly don't think he's gonna be a first rounder for the Cleveland Browns. What I do like about Sanchez's mock is what he has going off the board in the first four picks. Teams don't reach on quarterbacks in this mock draft, and that's great because this, this draft season is quarterbacks will be reaches early in the first round. We talked about it with Ritter. If anybody goes in that range, it's gonna feel like a reach. And in this mock draft, Sanchez goes chalk. The first pick overall in this scenario is the Jacksonville Jaguars. They take Evan Neal, the Alabama offensive tackle, who pound for pound might end up being the best football player in this draft. And when you've already added Trevor Lawrence, a franchise quarterback, generational potential prospect in last year's draft, getting him a bookend offensive tackle, brilliant pick, perfect use of that first overall pick if the Jaguars end up with it this year. At number two, the Detroit Lions, they land Derek Stingley, a potential shutdown corner. Maybe it makes up for the mistake they made with Jeffrey Okuda, right? So if you get that lockdown cornerback, that could change the whole feel of your defense, the whole complexion of the defense. Suddenly the pass rush is better. So Derek Stingley at number two overall, if the Lions aren't going to be able to fix the quarterback problem with their first overall pick this year, whether it's the first overall, second overall, landing a shutdown corner, those guys are hard to find. They don't come around every day. They already missed on Jeffrey Okuda, it looks like. So getting Stingley at number two overall in this mock, really good use of the pick. And at number three overall, the Houston Texans, they get Kayvon Thibodeau, the, the phenomenal edge rushing prospect from Oregon. Again, if you're not going to get a quarterback, you might as well get the position that impacts the quarterback the most. The Jaguars do it at number one with offensive tackle. The Lions do it at number, at number two with the cornerback, which could shut down the, court, the, court, the opposing quarterback. And the Texans do it at number three overall with the, with the NFL draft's best pass rusher in next year's class. So overall, pretty good mock draft. Maybe a little bit of reaching with the quarterbacks, but the way Sanchez broke down the first few picks, it was chalk, it was perfect, and this is the way hopefully the 2022 NFL draft ends up panning out in the long run. You can follow me over on Twitter at Brian Perez NFL, and make sure you come back to thedraftnetwork.com for all the latest NFL draft news and analysis.